you number five. So not not much here, right? And then right at the bottom, we talk about three different links here that leads you to actually the collab. The well, I mean, deploying the portal, right? It's just that like say, oh, well, oh, why not just go through this code level and then we just finish it and we forget it. Right? No, okay, I I'll say I'll cover about the first two. Very, very critical, okay. You know, I mean, the only game here is that we just develop a very simple app that we just use our camera apps because, well, and Android phone, right? We are using it to like say you can just point the camera and then uh, like, and from the frame side, all the image that comes in and then after that, right, is you straight away go and predict. <laughs> okay, the third one, right? I have to confess something when I do a bit about a uh, pre pre development, and it's just that I didn't really use about a uh, code things. Okay, I do have a code here, but unfortunately, uh, is that it will only be available right after the workshop. Okay, so let me do a useful. Right before we actually like really go go and start developing and make sure everyone has a uh, Android uh, Studio already installed, so that actually really like, spend. If you want to really spend the whole time <laughs> doing coding for this. But I think, okay, now 4.36, maybe if we say we want to end like in you know, half an hour or so time ago, okay, you can actually also either wait for my code to come out or, or rather maybe you can actually say, you see, run run through this code lab. You see, it took about 21 minutes. The whole code lab is like take 21 minutes and then it's uh, one of which is, well, go to code lab and then do some training and then you download the model inside and of course uh let, let's not forget okay the we are going to use a ts light here so the file format okay you need two files for actually try to deploy when develop and then make use of ts light you need text files also the text file actually is uh, all the labels inside so i want to explain about that later and then of course not, not to mention the model itself, and uh, still need the the dot tf like extension here. <coughs> okay. I think let's start. Let's say suppose that we want to start the project from scratch. I to start looking with uh, looking into at this collapse uh, in the starting up with the. Uh, camera as, as the base. I mean you say why? Because okay, for this collab like it uses a uh, Kotlin, something that we want to use uh, for this uh, workshop. Whereas right another this uh collab about recognizing flowers uh, when I actually download the their project uh, is it's actually written in Java. Now that's not the end of the story actually. The implementation of the camera, right? Uh, the camera function actually is more complicated than that when we try to use camera X. Camera X only like maybe a few lines. Or like. Okay. So if if you want to find where uh, the where the links to all the collapse here I uh, think you you can go to our repo, the AI from data device, then you look at the modify and drop dot markdown is a file. Then the bottom part is a there's a references. <coughs> then there are like two two very important links. The first two links are generally very important. Okay, is that we are up the game, we are, I'm going to use camera X, I'm going to use also deploy the uh, uh, TensorFlow model inside. <coughs> so it's up to you whether you want to uh, really like run through this if you should have like you can spend like 20, 20 minutes ago. Okay. 
I talk about my uh, project. Uh, let's start from uh, let, let's start from scratch. Maybe firstly is uh, near Open Android Studio. We're going to use empty activity here. So we create a new project. You see the empty activity here. As well. So uh, give a name. Actually, I, I would call it rather like maybe like classification or whatever, but it's up to you. But okay, and then uh, use choose Kotlin as the language. Here it says at least uh, API level, at least minimum API level must be twenty one. <coughs> I mean, okay uh, uh, maybe at least marshmallow might. I'd be okay. Anything, anything over, uh, older than that is might not be compatible. <coughs> so th they say the API level is actually is corresponding to a uh, different Android version. So you can check out the Android developer uh, documentation, see what the corresponding. Then you also, uh, let's say you when try to download SDK side in the Android Studio, they also mention at level 21 which versions <coughs> Android. Oh, so, ah, uh, okay, here, uh, maybe here, API 21 is 6 here, Android 5.0, so at least must be only box amount. Even thing, if you are uh, trying to develop for something like KitKat, even older, I think uh, it's not possible to use a camera accent. Uh, I think I'll go straight into uh, the code proper. Okay, I'll start with your the camera experts because maybe you try to develop the camera inside. Let me try to uh, increase the font size so you see more clearly. I think we should open the uh, more important. <laughs> they should open the more important part. The oh yeah. Okay. Then when we see the build creator first. So creator right is actually a build tool that's uh, used by Java and then of course Android but it does okay <coughs> I want to really highlight okay that when doing this right first of all this you need to add these two lines A APT options so for any of the files I of the TF like files and you want to really compress see me low inside then just put it up. Okay, dependency wise right okay talk about uh, app compatibility I set the version 1.1.0 actually is a uh, release candidate 0 01 the fact that some some older versions right you try to rerun the application in there's a potential crash in the app because right uh, of some issues with the life cycle. <coughs> then we have uh, Android, uh, the camera X. Now we are using the alpha version, so I think people are saying it's quite promising already. Don't forget that we want to include like this uh, tensor flow light. So for now we can just uh, if you want to play with it, you use the night nightly version. <coughs> okay, 
but here okay in the comments actually I did not have a uh, include like what's a uh, tensor flow like local actually think the normal tensor flow like will be the uh, sufficient Now I want to come to the uh, main activity. So, in fact, right for websites, that web pages, what's Android? Right? Android different screens like this screen will actually be uh, covered by by one one activity usually like one screen or this kind of thing. <coughs> so you you see okay. Actually, right beforehand, I will later show you where I'm going to uh, add two more components for the UI view. One is actually is the viewfinder. So when you definitely know, right, you use the camera, you have to know how to do the preview of this kind of thing. Right? The next one is definitely is the text. Two very similar. Okay, text, right, is after. So when the camera captures all the like frame, different frames, and then do all the after doing analysis, the output right is actually displayed on this label. <coughs> okay. So I will, uh, okay, concentrate on the on create first. So in the uh, in the initial stage of this life cycle or the activity life cycle, could come to this uh on create so the part here is that uh to set the content so that that is uh defined like we have two uh components in this ui then namely we just have uh the the viewfinder the other is a label <coughs> now there's one more thing okay we have to include is that uh this part is if all permissions are actually granted so what's actually happening here is that for Android like whenever you install the app, there are some hard uh, resources, okay, in particular to the hardware that maybe that requires the user to actually approve before the app can actually use. So then so what's the part about the request? is actually like here it's actually a private it's sometimes it's that we we'll check whether this uh, permission okay is granted here okay think not much about talking about <laughs> So I think right, I, I just want to skip a, a few feel like straight go straight to the camera X part. So <coughs> you concentrate on uh start camera. Okay. Let's see why it's in the collapse. talk about creating the viewfinder layout so you see uh, there's a there's a file there's a main activity that's XML then you look uh, just write in all the like the you you know there's kind of viewfinder but okay we have to include the G now here's how when I go to add the source source then see your main see your resources res you find your layout finally come to the activity main <coughs> then 
Then you can see there are two components. One's the viewfinder, the one that I try to preview. Uh, we try to set like a uh, oops. Uh, we set like square square size about six four zero six four zero. Then the bottom part got the text view here. Uh, I think in view of time, we try to uh, uh, try to continue here first. So uh, at the end of the day, I think after the workshop, I try to upload the code into the GitLab report. Let you know where to try to get get look to. A okay, this this part of the camera access in. Uh, it's quite crucial. Uh. So I mentioned that if let's say the app wants to access a hardware resource so for security, uh, uh, you will have to ask the user permission. Uh. So there's a you go to the say the application, right? The manifest, right? Actually, is right at these resources. There's an Android manifest whereby I will just add a few like. Add better allows us to use the camera, to use the auto focus in the camera. Is this the problem with app development? Uh, is this the problem with app development? Uh, things just become deprecated like so fast. Okay, and then the rest of code, right? There, there are quite several code that actually uh, does the camera uh, asking camera permissions, which I they are very really explained here. But now, uh, okay. Coming to the whole core of the whole uh, camera X, okay. We're going to implement two parts of the camera X. One's definitely the viewfinder. The other, right? You see here, there's either the image capture and or the image analysis. Now, for the purpose of this uh, TF like uh, deployment, uh, we are not going to use uh, image capture. You're going to use like uh, image analysis. <coughs> so, yeah, well, so me not a bit bigger. <coughs> wow. Someone said, ah, uh, Kotlin is fun to play with because, ah, uh, you know why? We have a lot of fun here. Whenever I talk about function, they always like to call it fun. Okay, step one. Here, okay, we are going to add, create a new function that's actually called dark camera. There's a preview config. We're going to create a builder here. Now, you you see, I unlike Java, there's no new form. Uh, there's no new keyword. It's just constructed right, straight away. Just say the name, right? Preview config dot builder. The next part is a Player is well, interesting because, like in Java style, is you define the preview config as new preview config dot builder. Then after that, preview config dot set target expect ratio and then continue on it. This one no because this one right is generally a very functional way of. Uh, writing out. Oh, okay, firstly, we try to create a new instance of a preview config builder, and then after that, right, we set to a configuration used on the builder by setting the target expect ratio and the target resolution. <coughs> okay, now. For target resolution, right, the minimum target resolution is like uh six four zero by four zero. You can actually say higher, but uh for this preview, right, we just uh you know, keep it like six four zero six four zero with a uh, expect ratio one. Right? Then after that, right, once you do all the settings, all uh, this, just now at the end of the functionality, you have to write the dot build. 
after uh, you already uh, cope with the previous config, we will just have a create a new instance of a preview, which actually is a with the preview config. So it builds a view finder use case. Then, of course, we set a listener here. Is that whenever the view finder they want to update it, then we'll try to recompute. So last step is actually to uh, bind it to the life cycle. So here it says it would complain that. Okay, for one thing actually is that the this right actually refers to the activity. There's one more thing that I need to uh, re mention is that uh, it, it's not just inheriting from the It's not just inheriting from this uh, base entity, but it's also uh, inheriting from this life cycle owner. <coughs> so I think that if actually enjoys to view right, it com complains that there's uh, not the life cycle owner, but uh, instead try to rebuild the project or you need to update the dependency at least to 1.1.0 uh, okay this part gets very, very tricky especially in the camera right you know the phone right it's not always like i like maybe probably laptop webcam right but it can be in almost any any rotation like even 0 to 360 so that's why there's a update transform uh, <coughs> the function here. And of course it just uh, make use of matrix to do a do rotation here. Then. Okay, think the next step goes straight into a uh, image analysis. Now <coughs> I think the key thing here is that uh, it's not about just simply say I want to copy the entire thing and they're really like pacing the work because we still want to actually have to make use of a classifier that enjoy like uh, the <coughs> the here flight I mean why only uh, image analysis so how, how it works actually is that uh, whenever okay camera going around and then actually the camera will capture images uh, the the frames so these frames right will, will straight away send towards the the system will come to this uh, function known as the analyze you will come up now this is what happened now you get image proxy but now uh, don't think that uh, the image proxy will get, get proxy uh, then can straight away uh, send it to the send it to uh, TF light and then predict already in the break. You will get error. One thing is the format output okay of this uh, image proxy is not the same. You see, it said right, the format right here is U V uh Y U V uh. so Definitely a bit of conversation needed. And that's not the end of the story actually. I have already mentioned about this morning we we'll want to uh, take note of what's the input resolution, the shape, right? I never try fitting to the because right you need the numbers right to actually rescale the image, right? Before you try to fit it in. Then trouble is there. How how we skill them, <clears throat> and then the input image right to uh this uh model actually it's not pigment or it's even in a pipe array and stuff. I will show quotes very soon about uh how to run. Okay, 
one thing I did not really touch on when I was uh, doing this deport development is that actually it's the rotation degree. But I say it's very, very important, right? Because let's uh, if let's say right the image right, yeah, it's not really upright. Uh. I I think the system will also predict wrongly on. Uh, you just uh, misinterpret that image as a uh, different thing. Uh. So this is something uh, I have not really taken look of. Uh, I haven't really taken care of. But if you really have a dare enough, uh, try to have a look into what exactly rotation degrees and how you want to make the image look upright first before you try to uh, <coughs> fade it to the border. Okay, the next section, actually I want to talk about a slide. Ah, so, you have a preview, just so now at the start camera, it's just what to modify the, the uh, code a little bit. Now, here's another problem, you see. I, you see, you have a preview image kind of things, and then you want the uh, camera, not just camera, you want the system achieve when you run the model. It's not just run model, you interpret the uh, image or the model, you to feed the image to the model. The trouble is that uh, if you do it in the main track, okay, for the front end, uh, everyone will call it the UI track. Uh, actually, the phone will hang. So that's why uh, they wanted to actually uh, spin up a new track here. <coughs> now for this handle track, G, when you create this handle track, you give a game and then you just uh, simply start the track. Only. <coughs> then you try to set the callback handler. So that's why you see, here it says, I try to use a worker track. You want to run the Try to run the feeding of model straight to uh, achieve the worker track instead of uh, actually uh, use the main track to really hang the things around. Now, the last thing is that okay, after you have just created an image analysis config, build it up. The next part, I also going to create new image analysis. Yeah, after that, right, you, modif you also need to modify one line that actually is a camera X5 to life cycle. So you have two. One actually is a preview. The other, okay, it's not image capture. It's actually it's like, okay, thing may not be as we are check this. Ah, yes. You still need to put analysis. Show you a bigger one. So, still need to review, you still need an uh, analyzer that you bind towards the uh, life cycle. So, it's like handling whatever uh, close, uh, by, uh, close camera, whatever things you try to uh, bind it earlier. <coughs> So, okay, I will summarize a bit about camera X. Uh. From here, right, when, uh, for both trips, try to uh, implement the preview, the viewfinder, and then actually the analyzer use case. So, we need it's about roughly uh, two, about three times out for each session. Okay. Now, okay, finally, I think the last part, which we want to talk about the Okay, you just want to ask where am I going to load all my uh, TF light, uh, taxi, all these kind of things uh, inside. Uh, you see, uh, the area is under app, app here, the top loop part, then go down source, src, then go down access, and after that, in this access, right, we have quite a few of it, okay. Can actually load quantize, can actually load like uh like 
even the flow. But very careful about it. And of course, in the same access here, right? So try to load uh, the text. Actually, it contains all the labels. It's very important because I think eventually you will, after the result of this uh, interpreter, you come out with all the you need these labels. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Now, call of it. Maybe uh, let's quickly go through first. The... So, okay, I have a base classifier here in this. Uh, and the purpose here, right, is actually a common code whereby I want to load all the. When you try to load the model inside, and then after that, right? Now, where actually this uh, inference that run actually is at the two sharp classes. One is actually uh, is a flow mobile net. Whereby I'm doing the, if let's say, okay, your model is not quantized, it's in the flow format, then you try to use the flow. Another one, right? Is quantized. Let's say uh, I, I mean the model has really uh, converted quantized. Then I'll be using this. Okay. So where am I going to explain? Uh, specifically ex specify where the name of this uh TFI C got the get model. Okay. See, for instance, okay, let's say I, I use a quantized model. <coughs> a few things in consider. Number one, uh, image size, right, needs to uh, specify very carefully about uh, the, the input image size. This for uh, actually for resizing. Secondly, right, I just have to uh, Mention what's the model, the where where get the model file and the label file. I'll try to look to. No, you you find that there are uh, generally of course two uh, a few more other uh, like this these functions actually is no some of them actually of course obviously they are like post post processing is that. Once the after you get a result, is that how you going to convert it to like a zero to one? Okay, based on this one guy's So, so you see that like get the most probably. Now, last function here, override fun. This is the right inference. Is where the main. Okay. Main model actually say we will just run tf like dot run, and then realize that. I just run the, the image. Now this I will tell you beforehand, okay, the, the there's also a pre and the host front. There are pre pre run job, post run job. Here you see some some of them are also uh post run jobs here and okay. okay, the output here right is actually right, it has to be a double dimensional array. It's a in terms of like a by a double dimensional array of type by. Uh, how many will express it is like it's an array of a type by array. Okay. Okay, I think I will go straight actually there about the pre processing of the. Images. Well, I tell you seriously, okay. When you try to develop an uh, Android, it's not like really, really straightforward. Say, oh, uh, I just throw the information straight down, and after that, and then, uh, it just come out for the, the results. <laughs> Can you imagine, or uh, how they true? I, I mean, I mean, according to the code labs, like. Okay, this what happened. You see, in this uh, regular file, asking you, right, you see, convert the app to run your model. So, 
you just think, wow, happy go lucky go in one if I want two lines, put put the uh, put these two files inside and then I'll let Siri run. The, the next second is that instead of really running it right, the whole app will actually crash and then <laughs> you don't even know what actually happened. <clears throat> so I mean to, to make things even worse is that oh we are using camera X, you know, the output of the image is not the uh, like what is actually required. So a bit different from what is the uh, required format for actually the tip. So I give a quick one as to talk how how to really deal with this one. So okay, the important part is that uh, we come to the analyze part. It's only a few lines, a few, but the truth is that the convert to bitmap, uh, the real part is that. Well, I will get the image of proxy. The next part is that I need to convert to bitmap. The reason why the next step, right, from after you convert to bitmap, right, I will do a rescue. Skill ready, not not good enough, you know. Okay. Okay, the scaling and the conversion, there's, there's further conversion actually. You find it a bit of So in the classifier, oh yeah. So there's this function actually to recognize the image. Okay, this is where the like in, in this classifier, this function, right, is actually you have the, another core function that actually try to uh, tell the whole process of the world as you do it. Now there are two parts here. First part, right, is I have to pre-process the image. So now I've turned it on BMA already. I have to scale it straight to uh, the area where I can actually fit into <coughs> fit the image data of that. Now that's not the end of the story at all. I have to convert it to a byte buffer. Remember uh, the this image data when when you say you try try to run here is that the only record is must be of type of byte buffer. Now, after you run the inference, right? Actually, what, what comes out, right, from actually at the end of your own network is the whole list of what? Actually, all the numbers for this counting, right? And then each of the numbers will definitely correspond to one of the labels. What to do? So, what I do? We got to sort it up. This whole line, okay. Firstly, of course, uh, we will need to. Okay. Then, okay. So you may wonder well, why you should have a recognition somehow. Okay, G. You see, it's not only about. It will contain both labels and then after that, uh, this is actually the confidence value. So it's is in terms of like the. Okay, let me see. See where I can. I think I want to clarify first. See, see what happened in recognition, right? Okay. So, by right, this part, right? Okay. Is I will try to. Uh, there's actually a class which actually says a recognition is uh, just a data class uh, to hold like the labels and what's the uh, confidence level here. 
So for each of the labels, I will try to get uh, not just uh, like the labels, but also I will get the popularity of this uh, like the. So it's the output value coming out from actually the the neural networks. Then I try to plot it out, and of course I will actually return the whole uh, list. No, it's not not the whole list. I try to uh, maybe this part right. It's a recognition size. Uh, for this one, is it just be take the first three top three of the labels here. Well, for this one, okay. After that, actually, I only really pick up the last uh, pick up the top and the other right. Try to display on the display on the text. Don't ever think, right, because, right, okay, you run the model on one track, right? The next problem is that how you will display it. The trouble is the UI track, right, is now owning the label, which means that only UI track, right, can actually change the text label. So, you got to pass, right, the text label from the worker track back to the UI track. Now, for this, right, I will use handler here there are many parts of it actually here. so now you realize okay I, I will create a uh, label handler at this uh, as a main activity so you see, when, when I create a new instant object that's type more and carry of type handler, so we will make sure that this uh, message, okay, when I set the text, right, it has to be this, uh, the UI track. Then I want to pass it straight down to this, uh, the model analyzer, where you see, uh, it will be used in the analyze. Once, right, you get all the result, all this kind of thing, the final thing is that I will create a message which will send just a simply like uh, the title then straight straight send the title and then the target will actually update the the text so i mean when, okay so when you build and choose run right we try to uh, like uh, look look through through scan uh, some objects at the bottom right, the uh, text each time will uh, keep changing and changing a lot. <laughs> okay, maybe give a quick status what actually like happened. But uh, before we try to run the, probably we want to see things are running the first. But may okay in. Test run right, okay. You can actually run it on actual uh, virtual device, but it take, can take quite a bit of uh, computing power. Or you, if you are very bold enough, you can set Android uh, enable developer mode, and then after that you connect through the USB. I think it's very important because right at, at least right, when you connect USB, right, you can actually see the log files or anything that goes along here. You know. So. I probably have already built the app. Try to run it. Well, last time I ran, not really crashed my phone. The same thing doesn't really happen. Oh, you have to take a bit of time here. PC memory. Yeah. Yeah, it's setting up actually. It's really setting up. Okay, meanwhile, I just want to uh, have a quick announcement here. Okay, you can see in front of me, actually we have quite a lot of uh, equipment down here. And I'm glad to tell you that uh, we will be uploading the recorded video straight on the website called uh, engineers.sg. So actually, 
these are not the video uh, that also be in NGS.SG. There's yes, a lot of uh, meetup videos that uh, happen in Singapore. So in case actually you miss something, you may want to catch up, you can go to NGS.SG, probably at the NGS.SG YouTube channel. Uh, add it on, okay, I will try to upload uh, this code into the Git, into a Git repo and then send you the links. So I, <laughs> yeah, any of day, seems that for Android, things are not really like very straightforward. It's I think compared to somehow when you want to try to develop it in terms of like JavaScript or that or even like PWA <laughs> See, it's still it, it taking quite a bit of computing power because you see uh, when the, for this Android emulator, right, it has takes like uses the virtual machine here If you actually run the collapse right for like this flower class, if you download the JavaScript, uh, <laughs> that JavaScript project is even more like well, you can say more complicated, especially like try to try to implement the camera uh, feature into the uh, application. Now I mean with camera X, just only a few lines. It's like oh, okay. <laughs> That's set to go, but I would say still not straightforward. Uh, still, still is still running. You see, you can see all, all the light, a uh, lot, lot printing out here, a lot of the lights, bit of errors around here. I mean, no guarantee that I will be able to see like the demo. The, and even okay, even I got it running. Uh, you you realize okay, actually the the preview up suddenly like it's not upright no. And then don't even have to talk about what's the prediction some more and the prediction is not not even not not even uh, very accurate it says. Oh. I think the issue is uh, about the, uh, some audio issues. It's not, not me saying it's not compiling, but this machine is trying to run and then it's like. <laughs> You think went away or not? Because I, I think more I actually cover more or less uh, the different parts. What to really like uh, think of in terms of uh, try to develop uh, Android and then along with uh, deployment in the TensorFlow. But I think if, if let's say uh, we don't mind about the try try not to talk about demo, we can uh, take it offline here. Questions or tips? tips. Yeah. Okay. Well, someone wants to ask for any tips or whatever. Uh, the the truth is that okay. Number one is that okay. Why why probably calling is uh calling only announce like for. Announcement of the support of calling makes about two years ago, and then about this year is that they are going to move to calling first. And of course, it's uh, like it's a matter of time they're going to drop the like the Java support here. So, which is why we'll try to use uh, 
Kotlin language to like really build the app and then uh, use all the tensor force. Secondly, of course, uh, much from a developer's perspective, is maybe we want to go for like good design, especially here, uh, like class may want to look and see how it would, is it uh, the class right? is it really like very good design already. Okay, then a uh, few things right, uh, maybe quick tips about uh, for tensor flow, uh, actually the border deployment. Uh, okay, you realize uh, okay, there are like two different parts, right? In addition, just simply say running all the, uh, the model. Uh, the first thing is that actually, right, is because for we using camera X, uh, we are getting images in, in the format is very different from the tensor that's different from what actually like the tensor flow like by actually need. So actually we will have to do a few computation. We will make use of BMAP actually to equal scale down to the correct uh, resolution. And finally, of course, the, the trouble is that it does not even accept BMAP. It will send byte buffer, so we have to turn back byte buffer. So you see how, how not so straightforward situation that uh, we are actually facing when we try to uh, do development in uh, Android. So quite a quick one, I think it's generally for uh, it's because these are like the Android development quite a lot of uh, coding that's actually involved. And for the state of time that we need like only want to cover the uh, key components, the, the, the things that we better try to look out for and potential pitfalls because it is possible at the end of the day, if let's say I'm going to run this app and I think the next second it just crash, then we don't even know more why these things are really happening. That's all that actually I can accomplish. Right? I think maybe when time for the closing. Okay. <laughs>